Hello, my name is Colin Greatwood. I'm a mechatronics technology engineer here with Festo, and today I'll be walking you through how to set up an off-the-shelf IO-Link master with a parameterization or configuration file from a previously configured master. And I'll be showing you how to set up the device validation setting of an IO-Link device. Here shown is a Festo VTUG IO-Link valve terminal. So quickly an overview of the hardware that we'll be using today. On the far left, you can see that I have a Festo power supply. It's 120 VAC single phase in, the black, white, and green wires, and then 24 volts DC out. Being powered by that power supply are two devices. On the far right, you can see an IFM AL1342 Modbus TCP, an IO-Link master device from IFM. And then in the center of the screen, you can see two, but only one is currently connected, uh, Festo VTUG valve manifolds. On the left-hand side of that VTUG, the gray box that's being used for the IO-Link communication is the iPort VAEM with 16 positions. Even though the VTUG shown here only has 12 valve positions, this valve terminal can handle up to 16 valves or 32 coils total. The two valve terminals shown, the one that's disconnected on the top and the one on the bottom that's powered on, are identical in their type code, number of valves, type of valves, and their IO-Link interface. A quick note on the connection shown here, the IFM IO-Link master is powered off the orange connector black cable shown here. I'm connected to the IoT port with the green Ethernet cable shown on the right. And then my VTUG IO-Link device is connected at the very first IO-Link port. That port is labeled X01. Because the VTUG IO-Link valve terminal is a class B IO-Link device, the gray cable that's shown connected to the IFM master is only for logic power. So it has a 24 volt DC connector inside it, a zero volt DC connector in the CQ IO-Link communication channel. Coming out of the VTUG connector, you can see two additional flying leads wires, the red and black, and that's your additional power supply required for class B devices. And you can see that's directly wired into the positive and negative terminals on the CACN power supply. So we're drawing power both from the IFM master from logic and then load from the power supply directly. Now transitioning over to my laptop, I will start with factory resetting the IO-Link master, just so I can show that this is gonna be the same thing as if you had pulled the IO-Link master off of your maintenance shelves or stores. So I'll start by going to IFM Moneo. I can go into my apps and launch IFM Moneo. Obviously you'll need to create a login here if you have not done so, which I have, I'll log in. And I can perform a network scan, scan on all ports. Once my device scan has completed, you can see that I am now seeing the IP address of the IoT port for my AL1342. If I try and connect, you can see that it says device could not be connected. Please check IP configuration. I have two options for this. Currently my local adapter that I have connected. As you can see here, I'm connected over my ethernet adapter called ethernet. And I was working on the 192.168.0.x subnet. And that's not compatible with the IP address, the default IP address of the IOT port. So I found that the simplest thing to do here, you can change the IP configuration of the IOT port if you so choose from this default from factory, or you can change your local adapter, which is what I'm gonna do. So to change my local adapter, I'll go to my network and sharing center, change adapter settings. Here's my available networks. You can see our network adapters. You can see ethernet is the one I'm definitely connected to. If I have any questions that that's the one I'm connected to, I can actually disconnect the ethernet cable from my laptop. And you'll see that it showed the network cable was unplugged. If I reconnect, Now you can see that my ethernet adapter shows connected again. I'll double click on that, click on properties, acknowledge any pop-ups from your IT department, and then I'll change the IPv4 address to something that is on the same subnet as my IoT port. 169, 254, 22. Since that was at 11, I'm gonna change this to, tw oh, sorry, 21. And I'm gonna keep the subnet mask the same as the IoT port and the default gateway I'll leave it the dot one address on that subnet. 
Now, once those have been adopted, I'll close all of those screens and I'll perform my network scan again. You can see that that address has been adopted here. When it says these are the network adapters it's going to scan over, you can see my Ethernet adapter is now showing the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway that I had just defined. Now I'll wait for the new network scan to complete. Great, once the network scan is completed, you'll see it shows one device found. And if I hover over that device, and I can choose to blink the LEDs that are shown on the front face, or I can just click the connect button. For me, it connected pretty instantaneously now that I'm on the right IP subnet. So you can see right away that in Moneo here, I have my AL1342. It has eight ports for IO link devices. And at port one, or the very first port again, um, I'm already detecting the IO link interface. So note this is the IO link interface VAEM L1S16 for 16 valve positions up to 32 coils. Uh, and it's detecting that device with the embedded IODD that is found under the device descriptions tab. Uh, I did not have to install that IODD for this to work. It's just pulling that, that value from the online repository of IODDs. So my next step, just to make sure that I'm starting at defaults, I'll click on the IOLink master, wait for it to pull up its fields, go down to the firmware section, and you can see there is an option for system command factory reset. I'm going to click factory reset, and I'll acknowledge the pop-up. If I'd like to see when this device turns off and on, I can go and I can try and ping that IP address. You can see right, right, right now, I, didn't, I wasn't able to ping it. If I wait a few more seconds and I do the same ping, you can see that it's cycled power and now it's been factory reset. I'll go back to my home screen and I'll perform my network scan one more time. Once the scan is complete, I'll click on my now factory reset IO link master to connect. And you can see I have the same detection occurring. I have the IoT port at its default IP address and the VAEM IOLink interface is still showing up here. The next thing that I'm gonna be showing you is how to configure a factory restored or factory default IOLink master. And I'm gonna set it up uh, for IOLink device validation. So knowing that the device we'll be validating for is the Festo VTUG IOLink interface, the VAEM shown here. So I'm gonna click on the master. Once its settings pull up, you have a number of options here that you can change. You can obviously change the IoT ports, uh, static or DHCP enabled IP address subnet and gateway. That's not what this video is about. So I'm gonna minimize the IoT port settings. You can also set up the field bus port, which we're not physically connected to. And you can set up the IP address subnet and gateway as well as other parameters for that port. But we're not gonna be using those today. I'll scroll down to port one. If you wanna get down to that quickly, you can click the little carrot here next to source. I'll expand port one. And you can see the default setting for the pin four mode is already IO link. So that's great. We don't need to change that. The transmission to LR agent or smart observer is already enabled. We don't need to change that or either of the fail safe settings. You can leave this as old and this as off. At the bottom of port one, there's a, another section titled IO link, expand that. Within this section, you can see some of the defaults for that IO link port. You can see the cycle time actual that's detected, the cycle time preset if you wanna do a fixed value. If it's value zero, this will auto negotiate. So I would recommend leaving, leaving this as zero the achieved bit rate, COM1, 2, or 3, and you can see it's detecting COM2 currently. And these last three settings are what we're really concerned with here. This is the ability to check if the connected device is a Festo device, and if that Festo device is exactly the same BTUG. So the first parameter we're concerned with is port one validation and data storage. You can see it's defaulted here to no check and clear, so any IO-Link device can really connect to that port at this point in time. I'm gonna click the down carrot, and I'm gonna select type compatible V1.1 device. So how do I know that the IO link valve terminal is a 1.1 device? Because it's a connected device, I can actually go back to my device noted here. And you see a few things that are important to note. The vendor ID is decimal 333 and the device ID is 800. We'll come back to that in a moment. But I can actually click view IODD. If I look in the XML file, this is your IO link description file, profile revision, you can see right here that it says dot 1.1. That's gonna be your IO link 1.1 version. Don't get confused by the version shown up here. This is the version of the IODD file, v2.1.3. So now we'll go back to our IOLink master. Again, we're gonna go down to port one's IOLink settings. And now that we know we're definitely an IOLink version 1.1 device, we'll make this selection. And the vendor ID and device ID were also available in the IOD, IODD file we just expanded. If you look here, the vendor ID is shown 
right near the top of the profile body. That's 333, and that applies to all FESO devices. Device ID 800 applies uniquely to the VAEM that you're working with here today and the left-hand version of it. If you need to confirm any further, you can look at the product ID shown down here. Product ID is 573939, and you can see that on the top of the IO-Link interface itself. So we're going to take those two decimal values for vendor ID and device ID, and we're going to type them in here. Now, once we have those three settings configured, we're going to write to the IO-Link master. It says parameters successfully written to the device. Now, we'll minimize all those settings. And the next thing we'll do is, is we've successfully configured our IO-Link master for the parameters we're trying to set up today. And I want to save that parameter, that parameter set for the IO-Link master. So in the bottom right corner, you'll see save parameter set. You can check the boxes for the, the master device that's defaulted, and then the individual ports that you want to save. I've only configured settings for one port from the default, so it only gives me one option. So I'm going to click Save. It says the parameter set was successfully saved, and you can confirm that if you go back and go to Saved Configurations. You can see here, this is the configuration that I just saved. Now I'm going to check the box for that saved configuration, which does include all the port settings, like I mentioned, and I'm going to export that. That export, as you can see, is now in my Downloads folder for my PC. And just to show how to use that configuration file or that parameter set file, I'm going to go back to my IO-Link master. And I, once again, I'm going to factory reset my IO-Link master. If, again, you want to make sure that your device is actually resetting and you want to see when that comes back online from the command prompt, you can see here that I'm pinging the device address. And after a few seconds, you can see I start getting responses from the device address again. And that's because it's set to the default IP for that IoT port. If I go back to the home screen, and you can see I still have my saved configuration here. I'm going to delete that. If I go back to the home screen, I have my factory defaulted IOLink master. If I want to confirm that it did go back to factory defaults, we can go back to that port one IOLink settings we changed, and you can see that the validation data storage value and the vendor ID and device ID are back at the factory defaults. So if I want to use that parameter set file to configure this IO-Link master, I am going to import the parameter set that I downloaded. I'll click Open. That's now added that parameter set to Moneo, the software here. I go back to Configure Devices. And if I hover over the IO-Link master, not the, not the individual ports or devices, I can go to the far right and you'll see Import Parameter Set. It shows the one and only parameter set that I have in that Save Configurations tab. I can check all the ports that I want to configure, and I'll click Overwrite Device. Nice. It says Done. Parameters successfully written to devices. I'll close this. I'll go back to my home. If I click on the IO-Link Master again, and I go down to Port 1's IO-Link settings, you can see that those values have been set from the stored parameter file. So that's just a quick example of how to configure your IO-Link master from the parameter set file. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use this device validation here under the port 1 IO-Link settings to confirm that you have the right device connected and any off-the-shelf maintenance replacements of your Valve terminal need to be the same vendor ID and device ID to be connected to this port. So for a quick example, I'm going to change this device ID to 801, which is incorrect for the VTUG Valve terminal we have connected. So now that I've connected that, so now that I've written that value 801, which does not match the IODD file, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what we see on our IFM master. So if you take a look at our IFM master, and I'm actually looking at the top-down view of our IFM IOLink master, you can see the gray cable there connected to the first IOLink device port, port one. And you can see that its connection is blinking red at about two hertz or so, indicating that the device is connected is not permissible. If I actually go back to, not Moneo, but if I type in the IP address of our IoT port into a new tab on my web browser, you can see that at port 1 here, I can see the web server for the IoT port. At port 1 here, I'm not detecting any device. So I'm not going to be able to perform any kind of field bus communications over that Modbus TCP port. Uh, nothing is going to work here. If I go back to Moneo and I change the device ID to the correct value, so 800, and we know this again from the IODD file, write it to the device. Double check that it was written. You can see that under current device value. Now I'll go back to that web server. 
and you can see that it's detecting the vendor ID, the device ID, and the device itself, and network communications to any kind of PLC would be successful. We can confirm this again by going back to look at our IO Link Master, and you can see now the light that was blinking red is now solid green, indicating a successful network connection or point to point connection for IO Link. Now that we understand the influence of the vendor ID and device ID parameters by port, shown here, I'm an AO, we can use that to our advantage. If I pull a device off of a maintenance shelf or a store that is identical in these two values, vendor ID and device ID. So that's going to be vendor ID 333 for Festo and device ID 800 for this specific variant of the VTUG shown here, the VAEM L1S16PT. If I have these implemented on port 1, any other device that I swap in as a maintenance replacement has to match those exact parameters. Let's take a look at our hardware again. You can see that the bottom valve terminal I have selected there is connected. It's connected to port one and everything's happy. What I'm going to do is power off the system here and connect the other devices if I was doing a maintenance replacement and the system should come right back up right away with the same function and no errors. Give me just a moment. I'm going to power off the system. Now that you see the system's off, I'm going to disconnect the M12 connector from the lower VTUG valve terminal and connect it to the upper identical valve terminal. Now you can see that I am connected to the upper valve terminal. I'm going to power everything back on. If I go back to Mineo and I go back to my master here, you can still see the same device shown on port one. If I go and refresh the web server available again, only through the IoT port, you can see that the same exact device, uh, the vendor ID, device ID, and name is showing up here on port one. Notice the serial number has changed to this different value than what was shown earlier. If I go back to Maneo and actually click on the port one device, you can see that is reflected in my actual value that I now have a different serial number, but an identical part plugged in for this application. And one final thing we wanna check, if we go back to our side camera here, we can see that the LED on the port one IOLink device port is solid green, indicating that everything is happy and communicating. This is a quick tutorial on how to set up the parameters for a specific port on this Modbus TCP IO Link Master for device validation and to show how that can check and make sure that you only have the correct device type, but different units of it plugged in throughout the lifetime of this integration. Thank you for your time. <music>